What's up everyone, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and this is a review of Vivo V5 after 3 months. In terms of design and build, Vivo has done a great job. The phone feels very sleek with a thickness of 7.6mm and only weighs 160 grams. Design looks very similar to Oppo F1s and the iPhone with few minor changes. Build is very solid. We have a unibody metal design with a 2.5D Corning Gorilla Glass on the front for added protection. All the buttons have nice tactile feel to them. Even the SIM card tray is very well built. We have touch capacitor fingerprint scanner on the front. It also acts like a home button. Fingerprint scanner is super fast and very accurate. We can also unlock locked applications and authenticate transactions. And it also comes with an app lock built in. We have all the basic sensors, LED notification light, OTG support, compass, FM radio, and the pseudo gyroscope. We have dual SIM support with dual 4G and VoLT support. Call quality and signal reception are good. Unlike most of the phones sold in its price range, Vivo V5 comes with a 5.5 inch display with just a HD resolution. Colors and viewing angles are good. Sunlight legibility is also good. For normal usage, HD resolution is manageable, but a full HD screen would have been much better. Vivo also offers a lot of screen gestures and a global eye protection mode to help protect your eyes at night. Apart from the screen resolution, everything related to the display is good. Vivo V5 comes with a 13 megapixel camera on the rear with face detection autofocus and an LED flash. On the front, we have a 20 megapixel camera with Sony IMX376 sensor with f2.0 aperture and a dedicated soft light. Rear camera does a decent job with good color reproduction, but it isn't impressive for the price, especially considering cameras are a highlight of this phone. And I have a mixed feeling about selfies. I was literally blown away by the selfies at first impressions. Even in the worst conditions, it took amazing selfies. But if you look closely, background is completely blown out. For most cases, you don't need the background. But if you have something like a Taj Mahal or an Eiffel Tower in the background, you'll be utterly disappointed by this phone. Fortunately, it's a software issue. And if you use other camera apps, this issue can be minimized. With an update, problem with exposure can be fixed. The primary USB of this device is selfies. And in that department, it does deliver. Under the hood, we have a MediaTek MT6750 processor, and I think Vivo itself was a little ashamed of this mediocre CPU. So in their official website for CPU, they said with great pride, Octaco CPU. By the way, on the Vivo V5 Plus page, they did mention the processor name, Snapdragon 625. So anyway, these are the benchmark scores. This phone offers entry-level performance, similar to a Snapdragon 410 or 400. It comes with 4GB of RAM and 32GB of internal storage and an option for expandable storage using the hybrid SIM slot. I'll talk more about the RAM management in the software section, but you can use the SD card as internal storage on this phone. For normal usage, performance is adequate, but if you install a lot of apps and switch between them a lot, then it won't be sufficient. Because of the HD screen, gaming performance is okay. You will notice some lag while playing high-end games, but it's manageable. There is no heating issue on the latest update. But because of the HD screen, I felt gaming experience on this phone to be a weak point. This is the first time I'm using a Vivo phone and I kinda had a good experience with it. There was no noticeable lag. UI resembled iPhone a lot. It even has very similar control center that pops up from the bottom with notification toggles and recent apps. In terms of the design of the UI, it is good. Software itself was made to make the non-techy people happy. It has 4GB of RAM and the phone by default is configured to kill apps in the background. At any given point in time, you will have 1GB of free RAM. If the phone is not going to use all the RAM, instead kill all the applications in the background, then what's the point of having 4GB of RAM, apart from just a marketing term? So that's what Vivo is doing. UI, as I've said, is responsive and fluid, but at the same time, animations felt slow. Most of the UI elements are cluttered in every corner of the phone. We have OTG support, but we need to enable it every time we want to use it. Most important settings, like the default apps, are present in an app called iManager. And you know what that i stands for. On the whole, UI is good. It has many good software features like screen gestures and super saver mode. If Vivo stops being a fake iPhone, it will go a long way. Vivo V5 has Hi-Fi audio, comes with a dedicated custom-made DAC. Audio experience was definitely above average, better than your standard phone, but it cannot be compared with phones like K5 Note or the Lenovo Vibe X3. 
For the best audio experience, you need to have high quality audio files and a good headset. At the bottom we have a mono speaker and it is loud enough for a small room. This phone survives on a 3000 mAh battery and comes with a normal 10 watts power adapter. It gets 80% of charge in 2 hours and can last you an entire day on normal usage. I got a screen on time of 4 to 5 hours on average. I truly have mixed feelings about this phone. You can't say this is a good phone or a bad one. As it's a retail phone, we can't even compare it with online exclusive phones. This phone is specifically designed to make people go crazy. It has all the right things to make people brag about it. iPhone's looks, a great front facing camera and decent battery life. Purely as a consumer who can buy online, this is without a doubt a bad and a horrible phone. Why? We have much better alternatives like Lenovo P2, Moto M, Z2 Plus that offer better performance, better battery life, better rear cameras, literally better at everything. Even the phones that cost much lesser perform way better than this phone. If I consider the retail market, I say this is an okay phone. Definitely much better than Samsung J7 Prime. You are getting a phone with amazing build and things to talk about like 20 megapixel camera and 4GB of RAM. With all that said, you can buy this phone for awesome selfies and better audio experience. If selfies are the only priority, then I'll recommend Oppo F1s instead. So guys, that's my review of Vivo V5. If you like this video, hit that like button and if you don't, hit that dislike button. Do check out these suggested videos and stay tuned to us by subscribing to our channel to see more cool videos on tech. I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech signing off. Have a nice day.